But no family thinks it will happen to them. And Nancy and Joe Vericker were no exception. They were the picture of the all-American family with the white picket fence, a loving family of six, mom Nancy, a youth minister. Family time was always a priority. But it all fell apart when their son turned to alcohol and drugs in a remarkable, remarkable cycle and story. Watch. I never longed for anything growing up. I had a great family, supportive, very tight-knit family. My husband and I were the kinds of people that we would be around on the weekends. We had family dinners at nights. We would spend time visiting relatives. That was a very important thing. We were very involved in our church. I felt different than other people. I never necessarily felt like I fit in. I was probably around 12 or 13, and I drank a Corona with a few buddies of mine. I remember drinking it and feeling like it was like this cool, great, exciting thing. He let his schoolwork go. He didn't get himself involved in sports or any of the things he was doing that were positive and just it was like chipping away by inches you could just see his life diminish and his drug use alcohol use began to increase i never wanted to do drugs and i have my parents to thank for that because from a year, very young age they drilled it into my head that drugs were bad so at some point in college, I had been drinking one night and one of the gentlemen that I was hanging out with said that he could get a prescription medication. And I think because of my inebriated state, I thought it was okay to take one. And I remember that night distinctly because when I took it, it hit me and I was like, how have I never done this before? It was like, I fell in love. Our son stole from us. Our son lied. He didn't do schoolwork took the car when he wasn't supposed to, then we had to hide the keys. It was like this brutal ping pong match of, or check, checkmate. Wherever the night took me, I would just kind of float. And I'd, I'd wake up the next morning with like a summons to court or a smashed cell phone or, you know, in some weird place and, and missing everything. My shoes are gone I didn't, and, I, and I couldn't tell you what happened. And most individuals instinctively you long for shelter, love. When someone's addicted to drugs or alcohol, that's skewed. What you strive to get and you're fighting to get every day is drugs. Nothing else matters. And Nancy Vericker was a wife and mother of four, living what looked like the perfect suburban life. But their family was battling a monster. Their son, J.P.'s addiction to drugs and alcohol. She writes about it uh, in a book that she co-authored with her son, Unchained. Our family's addiction mess is our message. Nancy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So when, you know, a lot of kids start drinking when they're in their teens, even young teens, and parents think, oh, God, I don't like this, but it's a rite of passage, and you don't know, and you think maybe it's just sort of they'll do it here, they'll do it there, they'll be fine. When, when did you know, no, 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 there's, there's a problem? Um, I think about J.P.'s sophomore year in high school, he really started to uh, lose interest in what, his life had been. He wasn't interested in school anymore. He wasn't interested in participating in after school activities. He was pulling away and withdrawing from our family activities, which was always like a big part of our life as a family. And um, his attitude started to get very um, confrontational. Uh, yeah. And so you started, you did um, all sorts of things summer wilderness program, um, you did addiction programs, you did boarding school even, yes. and he, he was caught drinking Listerine to get, to get high. In boarding school, yeah, which was a turnaround boarding school. It was a place kind of aimed at helping people get their footing, and um, he sort of rallied in that, and then it kind of unraveled. So it's anybody who's had addiction in their family knows it's like having a nuclear bomb go off in your family. I mean, it doesn't just affect the addict. It affects everyone everyone and you like almost every mom i know tried to save him tried to help him help him help him help him help him until it dawned on you all your help wasn't really helping at all well we got a lot of help for us to be able to get to that point on my own i'm a helicopter mother and i'm a mush but we sought the help of counselors and uh professionals and people in uh recovery support groups, uh, family members who taught us like the, the ropes of tough love. The tough love, and, and I know you had to focus on the love part of tough love to get yourself to do it, but what did that involve? 
uh, focusing on the love part. Just tough love. Like, oh, what, the for, tough for love. you, what did it mean? Well, once, once things really got bad at home, we had our son arrested, and um, we stuck with the charges, and then he decided to go to treatment for the first time. And when he got out of treatment, we said, you have to stay in treatment was down in Florida, and we said, you have to stay in Florida. You can't come home. You're going to go to a halfway house, and if you don't go to a halfway house, you're going to be homeless. So we really had to enforce that. And so you had your own son arrested. How did that feel? Uh, it was very hard to do, and as I said, we had a lot of support and help in order to be able to do that because it's completely, what tough love is, is completely against your wiring as a parent. Yep. It is it is everything you know as a parent, throw the book out. But for me, it, the lo someone said to me that uh, Christmas that JP was homeless and he was calling us every day in Florida. We hadn't seen him for seven months. He was asking us to wire him money. And a very close friend in recovery said that leaving our son would, in Florida at Christmas, just leaving him, no food, no, you know, he said, I'm hungry, Psst, sorry, click, um, was the most loving thing to do. Right. And, and more... They know. They, they know it, too. So, so was that the beginning of the beginning? I mean, was that the beginning of, of his turnaround? No. Yes. In essence, that was after several years, and uh, that was Christmas. And in April, he entered a recovery program and had his moment of awakening where he said, I'm going to give this 100 percent. I'm going to give this my best shot. And he, he turned his life around completely. It's like, it's, it's, like the, it's like the return of someone from the dead. When an addict in your life gets sober and comes back to you, it's like the return of someone who has died. You know, this person's been resurrected to you. How long has he been sober now? Eight years. Oh, and amazing. <laughs> amazing. And I know he, he gave us that on-camera interview. He didn't want to be here today because it's tough to talk about this stuff in a live studio audience, and I get that, but I'm so grateful that he did speak to our cameras. What do you want? Because you know there are millions of people out there right now, moms and dads, who are thinking, I can't do it. Yes. What do you want them to know? Uh, this is what I want them to know. My son co-owns a treatment program today. He was a high school dropout. He got his college degree. He got his training. He helps people now. And if I could have seen that those very difficult things that were breaking my heart to do would help him, because ultimately it was him, but would help him launch, then I would have done it much sooner. And that parents need to have the courage to try to do the thing that they most don't want to do, because that is the loving thing to do. That is it. You gave me the chills. Oh, thank you. Thank you. For sharing your story. Thanks. All the best to you and JP and your whole family. All of you. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.